Dave Beck, the managing partner at Foundry 45. Hi, Dave. Hey, Chris. Thanks for having me on here. You are uh, the, you are VR training leader, um, and you have participated in in our recent webinar for Atlanta um, with your use case for Delta. Can you tell us more about that? Yeah, we've had uh, an awesome opportunity to work with them. Uh, you know, they have a real problem where it's super hard to actually train new employees on an active jetway, right? I mean, so they have, they have when the plane comes into the terminal, they only have 30 or 35 minutes to turn it around and get it back out safely and securely. And you can't really train somebody, uh, you know, safely in that environment. You can't just take a plane out of service to be able to train somebody on it. And even just getting badged to be able to get down there, you know, badged by the FAA takes forever. So VR was a great solution for them. They've put thousands of people through the experience. They've had great results from uh, employee satisfaction, from a cost reduction standpoint, and uh, it got them excited to do a lot more. Tell us how you got into immersive uh, tech space. <laughs> I've actually been working in uh, immersive technology for about a decade now, and initially it was actually an augmented reality. So several years ago, we wanted to do hands-free augmented reality because a lot of the work we were doing was in manufacturing environments, and you couldn't really pick up a phone or a smart pa a tablet or whatever and, and then put it down and uh, get all dirty on the pieces of equipment. So. I think it was it was when the the Gear VR Innovators Edition came out, you know, end of 2014, beginning of 2015. Uh, one of my partners, Scott Driscoll, actually bought it, and with the idea that we would use it as a hands-free augmented reality device, because you could you could put your smartphone, you, you clamp it in, and then you could use the camera as a pass-through and actually see through the device. So you could see the real world while you're in VR or in the headset, and then you know overlay AR, uh, you know digital assets on top of the real world. It was a cool idea, but it didn't really work at all. <laughs> I mean, it was super laggy, which made it kind of nauseating, but wow, uh, VR just blew us away. And that's actually what got us started down our current path, and you know, haven't really looked back since. What are you seeing uh, with the new normal? <laughs> well, you know, I guess at a at a kind of basic level, we're definitely talking about hygiene a lot more than we ever did in the past. Unfortunately, there's some really good solutions uh, around that. But I will say, you know, kind of at the higher, at the macro level, you know, training is more important now than it's ever been. I mean, it really is. Uh, and that's not just with new employees, but that's also reskilling and upskilling. Those are super important. We actually have one client who's transitioning from you know conventional facilities to more automated ones, and they've got a really strong, very tenured staff, and they don't want to just push them aside, um, you know, as they move to a different environment. So they're using VR training to upskill them for the new roles in the new environment. And being able to do that in a virtual environment is just such a great, great way to learn right now. What are you most excited about uh, for the future? Oh, wow. Uh, that's a good question. Um, I mean, I guess the most interesting conversations that we're having right now are really around enterprise deployments. You know, so how do you get past just doing a proof of concept? And I mean, there's really two high level steps to taking VR and moving it out throughout the enterprise. The first is create your experience, and the second one is to scale it. And I think people already know a lot about the first one, right? You know, So hey, you, great, you've created a proof of concept. You like what you have. You socialize it around the business and make sure that you're going to get buy-in from any, anybody that might need to, to be a part of it. But then what's next, right? People need to understand how they actually get their return. And the next step is actually deploying it throughout the business. So you can take your initial content and you can take it to new plants or locations to get more people involved. You can also create more content as you're honing in on where you're getting the most bang for your buck. So for example, uh, you mentioned uh, Delta earlier. Um, you know, they started out with one thing, but then they moved into other similar areas that uh, you know, were kind of tangential to the ones that they already did because they found out that's where they were getting value. But then what we really see people doing now is actually we're, we're helping them integrate directly with their internal IT systems, right? Or learning management systems if people have them. 
And that way the training content can live in the same place as everything else, right? And then the last step is just, you have to measure the hell out of it, right? That's it, you gotta measure the KPIs to make sure that you're actually receiving the value on your investment. And those are the most interesting conversations that we're having today. You are an active participant in the VRIR Association's training committee. Can you tell us um, what do you get out of it by attending it every time? Well, <laughs> two things actually. Uh, I think the first one I would say that is, it's just a great opportunity for me to actually interact with my peers. Um, we have a bi-weekly meeting and, you know, it's an opportunity to kind of talk shop with people that are seeing the same problems, they're, they're addressing the same issues, you know, we can talk about the, the, the same concern I have about, uh, you know, one mobile platform or one hygiene issue is often something someone else has actually encountered. So that's been great. And then I think the second piece is just, it's a good conduit to kind of tie into new opportunities to get in front of folks from a, uh, you know, not, not even just necessarily from a prospect standpoint, but also just in general, as far as, as in creating additional opportunities for thought leadership.